the south of central europe stand the alps in this fantastic barren country a nation was formed switzerland over six centuries ago certain communities which had broken away from the great nations began to unite ever since that time the swiss have kept secure their ideals of independence and democracy today the country has little more than four million people people like these humble hard-working and only half aware of their share in international events in the turmoil of european politics the swiss have cherished their reputation for marksmanship every village in switzerland has its rifle range and its shooting club each sunday every man who can lift a rifle turns out for the practice the swiss peasant takes his shooting seriously it's just as deep an instinct with him as church going is with his wife. His national hero was a marksman, William Tell. People's struggle for existence is not political only. It's also economic. Nearly a quarter of their land is unproductive. Lakes and mountains on which nothing grows. Three-fifths of what remains is meadowland. They harvest hay with strong, light sides from mountainsides so steep that elsewhere they would be neglected. If this man was told he was working for the independence of his country, he might smile. But he is. In the valleys, two and perhaps three crops are taken in a year. But here, only one. The grass is of shorter growth, but finer quality. On the meadowland are fed and bred cattle. By dispensation of, of providence, the cattle also feed the meadowland. By this intensive system, Switzerland, in spite of its small size, is one of the three greatest cattle producing countries of Europe ranking with Denmark and Great Britain. In 1931, there were a million and a half cattle in the country, more than one for every three of the population. Yet Switzerland imports much of her meat. The cows are mainly used for their milk. More than one third of it is made into cheese. This amounts to about 85,000 tons, of which nearly one third is exported. Here is cheese being made in an agricultural college, much as it's made in farmhouses and factories all over the country. With so much of their country barren, the Swiss could not hope to live entirely by agriculture. The extravagant beauty of their scenery attracted globetrotters. Their grim, icy rock faces attracted climbers. Shears came for their snow slopes. Tired men for their clean, strong air. Switzerland became a great tourist center. 
Eventually, the number of hotels had to be kept down by law. But the Swiss aren't only hotel keepers. In fact, tourism is only their third industry. In the 16th and 17th centuries, religious refugees from France and Italy fled here to safety. Skilled workers came with them, lace makers, silk weavers, jewelers, watchmakers, designers of intricate mechanical models. These dolls were made by Jacques Drogue in the 18th century and operate on the same system as the modern automatic telephone exchange. One writes, Another draws. third plays the piano. The work of the fugitives throve in peace and they taught the Swiss their skill. The long Swiss winters kept them to their houses and fostered their industry. Soon they supplied all Europe with fine goods. industry which arose to supply these workers itself grew great. The Swiss peasant proved himself as keen and thorough a mechanic as his father was a mountain farmer. Switzerland became an industrial country. But the greatest of their natural resources was discovered only 30 years ago in the very glaciers and lakes whose beauty had seemed so idle. This was water power. The Alps are the watershed of Europe. Here rise the Rhine and the Rhone. As the mountain streams came down from their glacier sources, dams were thrown up to turn their force into electric power. Nearly 5,000 million units are produced in Switzerland every year. Over 2,000 million units are used by Swiss industry and the railways. A thousand million units are actually sold abroad. With the aid of the new source of power, the Swiss now compete in European markets for manufactured goods. The heavy industries take first place in their struggle for economic survival. Achtung! The great powers mobilize their economic strength against them. They raise tariff barriers on all sides. These customs, which seem to travelers a harmless nuisance, are to Switzerland economic warfare. So the Swiss, too, have set up economic barriers in defense of their cherished independence. <laughs> 